Um, thank you, Worley, for updating the agenda page. Um, so running down the viewer pipeline, we, we have the current maintenance viewer, which just got an update. Uh, and which is looking very good. That is by far the most likely one to be promoted at this point. Um, although that won't happen, uh, obviously, before the weekend. We're, we're past the time when we do that. Uh, whether or not it will be promoted next week depends on how it does over the weekend. Uh, yes, it is much better, but we don't have a lot of hours of data yet, so the number is not, we don't, we don't have enough confidence in the number yet. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're cautiously optimistic on this one. Uh, okay, then there's the uh, VLC update, which just went out and has very, very, very few users on it so far, uh, because we've been steering most of them to the main viewer, uh, but it will eventually catch up and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start getting good data on that. Um, we're feeling pretty good about that one. And uh, so that's, if you were going to bet, that would be a good thing to bet on being next in line after the maintenance viewer. Uh, Bento continues to solidify. Uh, I look for an update to that week after next or so. And uh, Visual Outfit Browser um, has gotten some fixes. It had, There's another update in the wings, but QA found a bug with it, so that's got to get fixed before it comes out. Um, then uh, looking further into the future, we have the 64-bit viewer. Uh, there's, of course, another batch of bug fixes, another maintenance viewer out there, and the voice update that I talked about last time, which uh, I've been working on myself, um, along with Vivox. Uh, so those are coming, um, and that's, that's what the voice 36 and some related issues um, is, is all about. It also has um, some voice quality improvements, actually new codec. So um, that's kind of where we are with things. So floors open. Hey, Oz, can I put in a request for something? Uh, sure. <laughs> you may or may not get it, but... Um, can, can you flip the um, streaming music off default on the viewers? Because every time I log in, I get blasted with streaming music. It doesn't save your preference? It, it's in the preferences, but for some reason, every time I update y'all's viewer... And I log back in on it. MIDI is flipped back on by default. Uh, well, that's the bug. It should preserve your your settings. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it should save your preferences. So I would I would take a look at whether or not what you're doing is causing your preferences to be overwritten. Just, yeah, it wouldn't be the same preference files. Um, I, don't, I don't offhand know what preference that is, but I'm sure one of the, one of the devs could help you figure that out. It, it certainly well, should be preserving that media. preference through, a, through an upgrade. We, we, don't, we, we don't suggest that people clear their settings or 
anything else between the upgrades. So um, whatever you, whatever settings changes you've made should should live through any update. Should live through, but famous last words are not. And, and it's the setting for streaming music that needs to be off by default. That's what keeps blasting me, and that it, it it's really annoying, and it tends to cause a lot of problems for me because. When I log in, that's the first thing I get is music all over the place. Yeah, you might want to look at your log file and see if your if there are any errors being written about saving your preferences when you exit, because if if your if your settings aren't getting saved, then that would account for the behavior you're seeing. Well, if you if you don't like having the firestorm, the music stream blasting, why do you have the music stream going? Uh, because it's on default by your viewer. That's what I'm saying. Oz. That so, I mean, is why do you have a music stream default. if you? Yeah. Because actually, sometimes I like to listen to music. But I don't like logging in with a blurring stream of music all the time. Yeah. Um, if if it's not saving that preference, then it should be, and that's the bug. Um, and if you could find if you could if you could find out whether or not we already have that bug filed and uh, point it out to me, I can flag it for attention. If not, file a new one. Or just file a new one and we'll find the duplicate. I I don't think I that I will I, I am sure, I'm I'm intuitively sure that uh we will not change the default. Because I I can file the book about it. I can put a request in there for that function to also be turned off default. Yeah, don't well, you could you could file that request. Go ahead. Um, please make those separate bugs if you're going to file them, because one will fix and the other one we probably won't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have nearly as much problem with um, settings corruptions as we used to. We did have a couple of bugs in the way the XML files were being written that were fixed, uh, uh, I want to say four or five months ago now. Um, and the well, there was the that was that was one, yeah, um, and I think we've pretty much got those settled down now. Uh, we at least detect them correctly, uh, so so I don't think that corrupted settings files are as big a deal as they as they were before. It, what it was was they were not getting completely written. Um, they were getting truncated, and of course, with XML, when it's truncated, it's no longer valid XML, and the parser fails, and you don't get the settings. So, um, but I, I think those are mostly fixed now. Yeah, right. Although most settings should get saved pretty much right away. But maybe that one doesn't. I don't know. Uh, did I see your mail? Doesn't look like I did. Uh, oh, the 
about the account thing. Is that what you were? Yeah, yeah, we're looking into that. Thank you. Oz, did you say there were some voice fixes coming through on the viewers as well? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Annie. I, I said, did you say there was some voice fixes coming through on the viewers as well? Yes. Uh, well, an update to SL Voice um, that uh, it accomplishes a bunch of things, some of which is laying the groundwork for future improvements, some of which is some security and privacy fixes, uh, and uh, some of which is just, uh, you know, routine fixes to how things work. Yeah. Should result in fewer disconnects and uh, at least in some cases, better voice quality. The potential for, be better way to say that is, the potential for better voice quality. Um, if everybody present is running the new plugin, you will have a better codec available than you have ever had before. Uh, okay, so there's some some um, connectivity fixes coming in then. Yeah, so and we'll that, have. And that is that what I'm. In? We're 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 working on a bunch of a, a longer term project that is for um, improving voice security and privacy, uh, avoiding being able to use it for for obnoxious purposes. And uh, we will, you know, those will take uh, quite a while to roll out um, because it's kind of one of these things where first we have to get some foundational work in place and then and then we'll um, and then we'll be able to start turning on new features that that do good things. Um, in the process, we're also just fixing yeah. bugs and improving quality. Um, so I'm looking. I'm looking now personally at at um, putting in some additional logging around how frequently uh, you're just unable to connect to voice at all. Uh, and or lose your connection to voice, um, which we I'm not happy with how we account for that right now. So I'm going to see if I can put in something to track that more closely. Uh, so, and that if if I succeed in doing that, that will be in the next update as well. Uh, let me see what 20075 is. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess indirectly it is, it is about the, the voice connection problem. Yes. Um, one of the difficulties with responding to bug reports like that one is that uh, we don't have, I don't currently have a metric I trust for how frequently that problem occurs. Um, so it's, it's all very interesting to say that it occurs more frequently now, and, and that may well be true for some people, um, but it could, it, that could, because of the way that stuff works, that could just as easily be local network problems for that person, um, either you know on their own machine or on their on their on their local LAN, or in their ISP, or in the backbone provider between their ISP and the internet, I, you know there are just a ton of ways that that can go wrong. Uh, I'm in fact distressingly familiar with all the ways that that can go wrong, um, and. Uh, and so we're trying to, we, we've already put in place in the last voice update, which is the version that Firestorm is about to include in their next update. Uh, we put in a whole bunch more 
reporting on voice quality and some uh, some of the kinds of failures that can occur but we we didn't have any better tracking of the specific failure that you can't connect to the voice server that gets you that dialog when you first log in so um, i'm going to i'm going to try to put something better in to track those so that we can really measure um, how frequently they're happening um, so we'll see uh, you know i haven't haven't got that haven't got that code written yet um, and possibly won't before our next meeting because i've got a very busy couple of weeks coming up Other topics? Well, there was there was definitely there was definitely the first couple of versions of the of the coroutine viewer had had some bugs in that, and the next couple of updates we think fixed them. But like I said, hard to measure on a global level. Uh, with the LL viewer, only, it's not supposed to work that two viewers can have voice. Although what's supposed to happen is that the first one can have voice and the second one cannot. Um, will there be an option for voice for Linux? Um, we are not doing new development on Linux, so it will work as well as it does right now for a while. When we get to making the incompatible changes we intend to make in the long run, it won't be working anymore. If you can make it work with Wine, uh, then you'll be in good shape. Yeah, disabling and re-enabling voice often will fix that problem at login because what that does is it tries to shut down the SL voice process and start it up again. It'll retry. Um, it'll start a new series of retries is what that really is. Uh, that's good to hear, Trinity. It might be really good if somebody who cares about running SL voice with wine uh, was to create a wiki page about that. If there, if it doesn't already exist.
Us, do you have a version of the 64-bit viewer that we can look at? No, we're not. We're not ready to distribute one yet. In fact, I don't. I don't think we even have one that runs yet. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm afraid that project is uh, something that the developers are very keen on getting done, um, myself included, uh, but it is not as high a priority as some of the other things we're working on, and so it keeps getting paused while we, while we attack something else. Uh, and so we're making progress on it, but it's sort of in fits and starts. Um, once we, you know, once we get it into uh, the point where it's a, a in the regular release stream, you know, project viewers and and, and release candidates, uh, that will become the norm, and then it'll not be an issue, and it'll get as much attention as everything else. I don't I don't know that I remember that kitty. We did a we did a we did a fork of the viewer that was that did uh, what we call basic mode but that if I recall correctly that didn't even have inventory. Uh, let me look at that link. Was that was that kind of like the old, the old um, text app viewer that y'all did many years back? I don't know. That was long before my time. Because hmm, yeah, I remember y'all did a um, a version of a text text based version of the viewer back like in I think two thousand nine two thousand ten. Uh, Kitty, I don't even remember that viewer, although I, I was here then. Um, if you can find a build number for it, I might be able to track down the code. Because we can always go from a build number to where it was built from, and if that if that repository still exists, I can find it. But I should... I should caution you that 
there have been a lot of changes made to inventory handling since then. So the back end of whatever that front end was uh, is liable to have changed in important and irreversible ways. Simple inventory. I get a, I get a, get something on Firestorm 4.1.1.28744 on some, on that. Okay, let's see if I can make something out of that. Yeah, that, <laughs> so I tracked down a repository on an internal backup server for that. Uh, it's, it's four years old and based on a, on a fork of the viewer that even the parent fork never made it out into release, much less that one. Um, I don't think you would find it a very useful starting point. Uh, it was, it was when inventory was still in the sliding side panel.
Yeah, sorry. Uh, if you, by the way, if anybody, if anyone thinks that they can do a more useful, user-friendly way to present inventory, um, we'd be we'd be more than happy to take a look at it. I don't think anybody thinks that the current inventory interface is the best one possible. Uh, what kind of things are you kind of looking at in that us? I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm, I, I was just making an open-ended suggestion that that's like, like any other UI change that improves usability you know we're more than happy to take a look at any any suggestions people have in fact i've i've got a few that we've already uh, accepted queued up that i i need to integrate into a viewer and, and get get uh, going Well, I know I like the function that the Firestorm has with being able to put the, um, uh, uh, we've got a, a bunch of snapshot pane improvements and uh, I don't know, I, I've been so delinquent about keeping up with them that I, I forget what they all are right now. Yeah, no rants. Well, I know I like the ability to put my received received items folder back into the main folder instead of having it back down. That clear that makes my inventory a little bit more more friendly for me. Um, there's, I think there's already a way to do that. Uh, if it's, I, I don't know that it's on the. Um, Right. Let Always here, show. But I know it's in the firestorm. Right. Always show folders. Right. Do y'all have the ability to hide in empty in system folders? Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask. Everybody says that's a Slendon feature as well. I spend remarkably little time hunting through the preference settings. The only fix I want you to put into the Linden Viewer is the, is docking the, the chat bar back down into the toolbar. That's the only one I really want. That would make the viewer a lot more friendly for me. But that's just me.
Any other topics for the day? Do we all get 20 minutes back? Thanks, Worley. Well, thank you all for coming, and I will see you again in two weeks. Thanks, Ash. And I tried. I attempted to delay it longer, but I'm I just I can't think what Jessica does. <laughs> Yeah, she's mastered it to to a T. Oh, by the way, Worley, the issue I had with NVIDIA corrupting the login credentials. I, I'm not sure exactly what caused that, but I reinstalled the NVIDIA experience beta. And I didn't have any more, any additional issues with it.